how many people that were killed in the name of different religions and ideologies and so on. There's a book, a study called Body Count, a quantitative review of political violence across world civilization. Oh, you got the book over there. And you got it here and you can get this. uh, uh, This is the actual book. It's called War and Peace in Islam, the Uses and Abuses of Jihad. And it's uh, edited by some very distinguished academics. And there is a chapter there, as you say, uh, dedicated to this academic survey uh, of mass killings in history, which you're now going to tell us about. First of all, let's see the distinguished academics who wrote this book. It's the nephew of the late King Hussein of Jordan, is chief advisor to the prime minister of Turkey. Oh, and some guy from Malaysia, in other words. <laughs> Those are the scholars with the objective analysis. World War II, 52 million. <laughs> It was it was done by Christian and Buddhist. <laughs> this guy, these guys blame World War II to Christianity and Buddhism. <laughs> this these guys blame World War II to Buddha and Jesus Christ. Then we go to World War I, 66 million. It was Christian. <laughs> Christians are responsible for World War I. It's Christianity responsible. And look at these people. In the World War II, they also added Buddhist because of Japan. But now, in World War I, they don't add the Ottoman Empire. Why? <laughs> ah, let me guess. Because the author is this guy. It is uh, edited by some very distinguished academics. By some very distinguished academics. It's available, you can get it online with PDF for free, actually. Uh, and the hard copy is actually uh, very inexpensive. And there is a chapter there, as you say, uh, dedicated to this academic survey of, of mass killings in history, which you're now going to tell us about. Calling these childish errors and propaganda academic survey is scandalous, Paul. Let me, because you, you still might not get it, let me describe those errors. When you say death toll, and then Christian death toll, Christian death toll, presenting as Christian death toll equals all people killed by Christians in history. Instead, the death toll, Christianity is responsible in history, is erroneous and misleading because it implies Christianity is somehow to blame for all the killings Christians did in history. This error, in quote marks, is most probably intentional because it's hard to believe many so-called academics made such a childish blunder. So that's obviously propaganda. That's intentional. Paul, let me make it more clear. Even you can understand. Okay. So, focus, Paul. If my w- I am a Christian and my wife cheats on me and I kill her, this survey will claim that is Christianity to blame. Can you understand now the error? If a Christian in history killed his wife because she was cheating on him, this survey will say this is because of Christianity. Can you understand the the error? What what can I say? I hope you understand. Although, hmm. if the non-intellectual propagandist you cited were to do an honest academic survey, this is what they should have done. Let's go to the Iraq war of 2003. Your propaganda yellow pages says that this war was Christian. Christian. Of course, Christianity had nothing to do with this war. Did Islam had something to do with this war? Of course. This war was after the climate of 9-11. That's a fact. So, Islam had something to do with this war. Bush had something to do with this war. Saddam Hussein had something to do with this war. 
Geopolitics had something to do with this war. Human greed, maybe, had something to do with this war. But Christianity, nothing to do with this war. So the only, in fact, ideology, in a sense of religion, was Islam. Yet, here you blame Christianity. Then, it it says the six-day war of uh, 1967 was Christian. You mean the Jewish-Arab war? Let's let's see that, guys. Wait a moment. Yeah, okay. So, the six-day war when Arabs attack Israel. Arabs attack Israel. It was Christians to blame. What the hell is wrong with you? (laughs) Christians. So, when Arabs attack Israel, it was Christians to blame. Ah, Okay. And then you say, the first Iraq war, when Iraq attacked Iran, and Iran asked the help of USA, that was antithesis to blame. Are you mentally retarded? So, when Muslims in Iraq attacked Ira- Iran, it was antithesis to blame. What? Okay. The Western civilization, driven by the Western values of truth, intellectualism, sciences, etc., commit to real scholarship. Unfortunately, while we continue to witness Islamists animated by Islamic values of supremacy over truth, commit to propaganda and superstition. Let's see this tweet. Museum in Istanbul corrects the history of the Muslim conquest of Co- of Constantinople. Now, guys, now what will <laughs> what will happen is we will learn the true history of the conquest of Constantinople. As I was walking through the Panorama 1453 Museum, I opened up the Wikipedia entry on the fall of Constantinople, and I was quite shocked. It talked about how the Muslims who entered the city had raped and pillaged and destroyed property and killed people. And, uh, here's a cat, (laughs) a kitten, (laughs) as I'm making this. So, um, and nothing could be farther from the truth. Muhammad al-Fatih was a patron of the arts. He was a poet himself. He was surrounded by scholars. He had a, um, he had a spiritual guide uh, um, who reminded him to uh, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a founding charter that's there in the museum where he describes his intent to win the hearts of the people. The Orthodox Christians in Constantinople had more freedom after Muhammad al-Fatih came than they did before because of their wars with the Catholics. Okay, guys, look now what... <laughs> okay, I don't know if I... If I want to laugh or cry. <laughs> Look now what this guy is saying. These, by the way, are my people, the Greeks. So the Greeks of Constantinople had more freedom when the Ottomans conquered them. This is what this guy just said now. This is big brain time. The conquest of Constantinople was the Ottomans liberating the Orthodox Christians from the Catholics. Nothing. Nothing. We could be lost for days in this desolation. Look! Guys, when the crisis with ISIS was happening, then I said, I said that in a, in a hundred years, Muslims will claim ISIS freedom fighters. And everybody was laughing. I was wrong. That happened after 11 years. Hung? Against Al-Assad secular regime. Uprising. Towards the secular nationalist dictatorship. (laughs) 
Revolution. According to Daniel Hakikachu, the Islamic State crisis in Syria was Muslims rise up against a secular dictatorial rule. This guy blames the mess in Syria and the war to secularism. Yeah. The Muslim skeptic. For someone to understand the idiocy of Ali Dawa, he needs to jump into his mind, into his mental process, completely corrupted by Islamic ideology. So, in his stupid mind, Islam is perfect. So, obviously, every speech against Islam is hate speech, and for terrorism, hate speech is to blame. That is his mental process. Just allow me on the stage. Now, plus, brothers and sisters, why am I against hate speech so much? Why am I against hate speech? Let me tell every single one of you guys why I'm against hate speech. You're so sensitive. Do you know these people? Do you know them? Scientologists answer. Does anybody the recognize these two faces? I am. I'm seeing them. This is a girl, a young, white, Someone innocent girl under my that earlier. got killed, if I'm not mistaken, Omar. in He's Manchester bombing. He's a piece of shit. I didn't say nothing. The, you the person on the left. I didn't say nothing. The person on the left in America, a Somalian sister, was butchered and thrown to the bushes in some park somewhere. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why? Because of hate speech. First he says, freedom of speech equals hate speech. And then <laughs> he says, Hate speech is responsible for terrorism. In other words, freedom of speech is responsible for terrorism. In the meanwhile, Islamofascists, enemies of the state, okay, the people who want to essentially subjugate us, enemies inside the state, are saying this kind of nonsense, are promoting Sharia and this kind of stuff, Britain treats its heroes like terrorists. Imagine that, guys. Tommy Robinson is held by police at Manchester Airport after being separated from his children, thrown out of Mexico on a matter of national security. Okay. This tweet, Paul Williams retweeted and liked. From there, I, I got this tweet. In case you don't know who is Tommy Robinson, Tommy Robinson is the hero who exposed the grooming gangs scandal in Britain. In other words, groups of Islamofascists were raping children, gang raping children, in the name of Islam. Tommy Robinson is the guy who exposed that. So this is how they treat him. Now, Paul Williams, who shows no tolerance to people who are exposing radical Islam, he's very tolerant when it comes to the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> 